liberty and unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity, your sons of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrant, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Go where you may, search where you will, roam through all the monarchies and despotisms of the old world, travel through South America, search, search out every abuse, and when you found the last, lay your facts by the side of everyday practices of this nation, and you will say with me that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without a rival. Frederick jo Douglass, July the 5th, Rochester, New York. Question. Has anything changed? You have the answer. Uh, and are there any other announcements? Our sacred African religions. And what our enemies have done is they've demonized some of our religions. For instance, when I grew up in Guyana, Obia which was the religion of the Africans, was regarded as a demono de demonic religion. And I can put my life on the line, I can put my head on the block right now. If you tune into 105.9 WNWK, you'll hear advertisements demonizing the voodoo religion. If you have voodoo courses, that's on the radio right now. And you know, whatever we do, one of the things we have to do is to make sure that we return our religions to the sacred place it does have in our midst. And we've been doing programs like this in that we have been getting sisters and brothers coming here to speak of our religions as they are, sacred religions. And today we will be having Sister Baina Bellu who's hot off the plane to share with us a religion that is sacred to her land. And I think there can be no better person to speak than when you get the female element dealing with this. Because after all, where did we all come from? The source. So let's return to that source. Most of you should know who Sister Baina is. She's been here a couple of times. But for the record, this sister has um, done some serious work in Haiti where she lives, she's run a school, she's taught there. Then she left and she was working up and down the west coast of Africa. She was in Ghana, she was in Nigeria, and in Togo, teaching in each of those places. And she's finally ended it back home where she belongs. And She's doing some serious work here on the difficult circumstances, which of course we all understand. And we need to support the sister, we need to strengthen her, and I'm sure that our ancestors will guard her, guide her, and protect us. And in bringing her forward today to share with experiences of this sacred religion, I know that we all would be enlightened. And with that as a backdrop, I have great pleasure in bringing to you this sister based on the tradition of all these sisters, which she introduced us to. If you have the fly, you'll see a whole list of sisters. She's just one of them, sisters and brothers from the land that gave you a revolution that is still unfinished. Right. Our sister, Baina Bello.
In the name of all liberation fighters, visible and invisible, those that we read about in our school books, and those that were pres presented, presented to us as mythological beings, as gods, as divinities, in the name of all of us who were in all the forms that we were before, united with us today in the forms that we are now, united with us tomorrow in the forms that we will be by our will, I greet you in ancient traditional terms, One. The reply is respect. Hi, One. Respect. Yes, in Haiti, traditionally, we say honor oh, no, when we come somewhere, which means I come with honor. And those who receive us say respect, which means we receive you with respect. So greeting at home when IT was IT was a matter of honoring and respecting each other. Today we gave this up for hell, oh. Mm. And indeed, we are living in it. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> we thank those who run African Echoes, who struggle and battle each week, to find people who have something to say, to come and share with those who have, who want to hear something. We thank all those who come to take a little time from the rat race, to come and be in the family and be with each other so we can find out who we are and who we ought to be. Tonight, we're going to look at Bodu. What is, Brother Inumi said, Bodu is a religion. I'm not so sure. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. Yeah. <laughs> For after analyzing the word religion and the practice of religions around this world today, I have come to understand religion is the business of selling that which you cannot see. And it's good business. The Catholics have done it. Muslims have done it. Protestants do it. Mormons do it. They sell to us and we buy and pay dearly that which we cannot see. Religions usually go after convincing people that they must be part of this religion if they want to be saved, if they want to save their soul. Religions usually say, if you're not part of my group, you're no good. You belong to the devil. And Vodun doesn't say that. Vodun doesn't care if you go to church, if you go to the temple, or go to the mosque. It doesn't matter to Vodun. You can go anywhere you want. And Vodun is still, it's all right with Vodun. And if we look at the word Vodun, we learn that it means the spirit is present. Be aware that the spirit is present. In all that you do, know that the spirit is present. It doesn't sell you a spirit with a particular name. It doesn't tell you unless you call the spirit Jesus or Allah or anything else, then you will be damned. No. Buddha is very comfortable. 
And it is so true. In Africa, it was known as Ifa. And you learned about Esu Elegba. When you come to Haiti, we call it Wadu. And we say Legba. When we go to Cuba, we talk about Santeria. We talk about Obia. We talk about Lukumi. All these are children of Ifa. And we find the principles remain the same, though the details may change. What is important is to know the principle. And most of all, as many of the Unga at home say to me, when I ask what is the most important thing about the doom, they say, well, you don't have to go somewhere, stick out your tongue, so they will put God in you. <laughs> in the doom, God is already there. You just have to know how to call on him and say, come on, I need this work done. You don't have a special day. There is no Saturday that is a special day, or Friday that is a special day, or Tuesday or Monday or any other day. But Doom says, you must be aware of the presence of the Spirit. Every minute, every second, in every thought, every word, and every action of yours. You are not a practicing voodoo on Sunday, and then on Tuesday you go kill people, on Friday you go steal, on Wednesday you go murder, and then on Sunday you are pure. No, voodoo does not recognize that. Your purpose, voodoo says, on this earth is to build good character. Our purpose as human beings is to build good character so we can create a worthwhile society and have a life of victory. So, how does one build good character? To build good character, Vodum give us a number of principles. Many places, and I T including, included, we have a tendency to take a principle and say there's a God. <coughs> People talk about the God Legba, the God Aizan, God so and so. But that's not the word the ancestors gave us. The ancestors gave us the word Lua. L, well, the white folks wrote it. L O A. But in the French language, there is also the word Lua. But white folks write it L O E, L O I. Their loa is written L O I, our loa is written L O A. Both are pronounced the same way. Both means the same thing. And what is the meaning of the word loa in French? It means law in English. So if they tell us we have the leg bar loa, how can it become God? Or is it that a law is a God? Question. So let's look at a couple of the principles, the laws that Vodun give us for a life of victory. Number one, many times we learn about Dum in Africa. In IET we call it Dumbala. Dambala represented by what? How is it represented? What form does it have? Dambala or dump? Anyone here knows? Excuse me? The snake. Yes. The form of a snake. Why? That is the law of life. The law of basic biological material life. And it tells us the law, in order to have life in a biological, material form, you must have flexibility and mobility. If there is no flexibility, there is no life. If there is no mobility, there is no material life, biological, material life. So why is it represented by a snake? 
Well, let's see. Which animal do we know of that is more flexible and has greater mobility than the snake? The snake lives in the desert. The snake lives in the water. It lives on the tree. It lives underground. It lives in the forest. It lives inside the human body or animal body. There is no place the snake will not live because it has tremendous flexibility and tremendous mobility. It could go anywhere and it can adapt to any situation. It does not die. It survives all trans transitions or new environments. It adapts, it doesn't die. As a matter of fact, we know that there are many types of snakes. Even when you cut them in half, what happens? The head will grow another tail. It's a very difficult animal to destroy. That is why this animal represents the very principle of life, flexibility, and mobility. In Haiti we call Dambala. In Africa it is called Dog. But this is just, remember we said the principle of life. Now we come into the first principle for social life. First principle for social life, that means interaction between humans, is legba. In Africa, Esu Elegba. In Haiti, Legba. In analyzing those words, Esu Elegba, we learn that Esu means the divine interpreter. And Elegba means the one who fights. The battleman, the military guy, the one who can defend situations. So, does it make sense that in IET, when Ifa came to IET and gave birth to Voodoo, in choosing a name for the very first principle between Esu and Elegba, in the situation that we were in, what is it logical that we should choose? Legba. Because we were in the battle ground. We were fighting for freedom, for life. So, legba is the dominant term in IT. Esu is the dominant term in other parts of Africa. Legba is the principle, the first, we say, first principle of social life, social interaction. And what is that principle? It is to create opportunity for others. We say it in, at home, we say opening the door. When you open the door, do you open it for yourself or do you open it for others? If you open it for yourself, it's just you. You come to the door, you open it. Nobody knows that you open the door and it doesn't matter. If opening the door is important, it's because you open the door to let somebody else go by. Huh? So, elegba, legba is the law which demands, in order to have a society, people must have as a first principle create an opportunity for the others. Give the other one, put the other one first. Give your brother a chance. Help your sister advance. That is the principle of legba. When you're talking about legba, when you pronounce this word, it, that's what it carries. That it means if you understand, if you say you serve legba, and you're always standing in the middle of a doorway, and people can't go through, there's something wrong with what you say. You know what you say and what you do. There is no harmony between what you say and what you do. 
if you believe in Legba and you, you are a servant of Legba, that means the principle is embodied in you and you act upon this principle, then automatically, if there is a problem here, we all need to get out of this room, then the dominant Legba among us all of us have the principle up in us, but the one that has it as a dominant character will be the one that will hold the door. Say, so brothers and sisters, this way, that way, and maybe this person will not ever go through this door. But this person will make sure that everybody else get out of the endangered area. That is a legba. Legba is not some spooky little something that's going to crawl up in the form of a snake that we need to adore. When we take our own language, we understand that we say, we serve a loi. Word for word, that's what we say. We do not say we adore a loi. There is no adoring in Vodun. There is servicing, giving service, putting your word into action, acting upon a principle, but not adoring. Okay? So legba, first law, first principle, for social principle, for a good society, a life of victory. Second one, we must develop, remember, the purpose of Madhu, to develop, to build good character. We came here to build good character. That means, do I sit down and I wait to see how I'm going to become somebody with good character? No. I'm supposed to build good character. I have to work on myself to put in myself the character traits that are necessary for a good society, for a life of victory. So I must, yeah, I'm told, the first principle I must know, and must apply, and must act upon, is Lega. Number two is Aiza. Aiza is the principle of organization and structure. You must know how to organize. Two people cannot coexist in a common space if there is no law, no rules, no organization. There has to be. So Aizo is that principle of organizing. And all these, the principles, Legba is a male principle. Aizo is a female principle. And Aizo is Legba's wife. So that means you must, that's your first duty, is to create opportunity for others, but it cannot be done in chaos. It must be organized. It must be structured. It must be measured. There must be degrees to everything. Aiza, they tell us, created music. What is music? Sound put into precise degrees, measures, density, everything is taken into account. Specific, detailed, precisions. That's what organization is all about. So we have Lekha, then we have Aiza. Spell it, sir. Spell it, Aiza. A Y I Z A N. Third principle for social, third social principle for a life of victory is Ogun. Ogun. O, G, G is that like in joy, is G or J? That's G. O, G, O, U, N. Ogun. Ogun is the principle of courage. Once you know your duty, create opportunity for others to help life flow. 
to advance, to bring progress in the life of a people. You must create opportunity for others. Number two, you must organize your actions. Number three, you must have courage. There is no life if there is no courage. Ogun is the principle of courage. And Vadun goes further and explains to us what is courage made of? Courage is made of truth. Spoken with an objective that is good for a community. Not any old kind of truth. You must speak the truth. No one. If you cannot speak the truth, you have no courage. When you are courageous, you speak the truth. This brother is bigger and taller than I am. If he asked me, sister, do you think I'm the most good looking man on this earth with his gun on his, in his head? I must tell him, no, you ain't. <laughs> if I pretend to be courageous. In spite of his gun. If the gun stops me, you tell me, well, have to be tactical, blah, 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 blah. I can speak the truth or I can shut up. But I have no excuse for speaking untruth if I am to be a courageous person. So courage begins with truth. And a truth spoken with what objective? To benefit a group. If I come with my gun and tell everybody here, give me your wallet, am I courageous? No, no I'm a jerk who wants to steal people's money. That's not being courageous. You get confused sometimes about these things. That's not being courageous. There is no truth in what I say. And there is no objective to serve for the benefit of a large group. I'm just going to take your money and put it in my hand and do something for me. It's useless action. Because me will go no I can have all the millions in the world. Any little nobody can attack me and destroy me as long as it's only me. But if we go together and we have millions, it will be very difficult for anybody to come and mess with any one of us. If we have no money, we have a position it will be very difficult for anybody to come and attack one of us. When we have Ligba, we create opportunity one for the other, so we can count on each other. We have trust among ourselves. That is strength. We have eyes up, organization, structure. It is difficult to come among us and buy some of us. And then we act with courage. When we act with courage, people are afraid of us. Ogu, we say, is courage. Courage is made of truth. And when you act in the benefit of a large group, that means there is justice. So we could make it in two simple words. We say Ogu is courage, and courage equal truth and justice. They come together. Fourth principle. Oshun. Oshun, Ogu, is a male principle. Oshun is a female principle. Oshun is the wife of Ogu. Oshun People usually translate it as love. And some of us get real stupid with the meaning of love. 
But let's go into the doom and ask the doom to explain to us what is love. Love is harmony in a multitude of things. To create harmony in a multitude of different things. Love is to have, I can heal you. The brother is, he's different from me. He's different height, he's different skin tone, he has different outfit. I'm not frightened by the fact that he doesn't look like me. I can deal with the brother, we can interact. We are different and we're going to find the, the can, the channel through which we can communicate. Because through organization, with courage, we're going to be able to deal with things and have a base of functioning. That's what love is. Love is not dooby dooby doo, I love you. <laughs> that is word, that is nonsense. When somebody tells you I love you, close your eyes and say, oh brother, if you're white and you have, you know, those people have different kind of color eyes, they should close their eyes and say, what's the color of my eye? <laughs> Three quarters of the time, the person who says that didn't even look at your face and don't know the color in your eyes. I see. Okay? Ask the person, the person say, I love you. Tell them, what do you know about me? What do you love about me? Tell me exactly. What specific? Is it my height? Is it my skin tone? Is it my hair? What is it you like? <laughs> Be precise, brother. Yes. You should ask. And you're going to find out the person can't say very much. They never really looked at you. They don't even you in the most superficial physical way. Now let's not get into your character. If they don't know what you look like, which their eyes is right on it, how are they going to know who you are? <coughs> to love is to know many things and be able to harmonize all the differences. No knowledge, no love possible. No knowledge, no love possible. <coughs> Bodo tells us we must develop, we must build good character. How do I know how to build my good character if I don't know who I am? I don't know what my weaknesses are. I don't know what my strengths are. If I don't know my weaknesses, I cannot know what my strengths are. Because I don't have the courage to speak the truth about myself to myself. I cannot know myself. And if I don't know myself, I cannot love myself. And if I don't love myself, can I love you? No way, Jose. I cannot love you. <laughs> There cannot be, love cannot exist without. And if you notice, as the principle comes, it's a build on. One is a prerequisite for the other. We're not talking about that love in the mouth. We're talking about love, a powerful weapon which is built on knowing and respecting others, having the courage to speak the truth, organizing. If you can't organize your life, what are you coming to do in my life? To come and create chaos? No, thank you. I'm very happy in my little life, well organized, just as it is. If you're going to come, that's because I see your life is well organized too. In fact, I'm going to admire your organization first. Your structure first. Not your body. Your structure in your life. I'm going to be mesmerized by your courage. And that's when there's going to be love between you and I. If I see no courage, I see no truth being spoken. I don't see you being able to give even an old lady a seat in a bus. You can't open 
open the door for a pregnant woman. Why in the world would I put my entrust, my, my sentimental life into your hands? That is a no-no in the door. You must go and build good character. When you have built good character, while I'm building good character, then the two of us will have a basis for doing something together. So we saw four principles for social interaction. Legba, followed by, or side by side with, Aizan. Look at this. You must, before even knowing anything, you must create opportunity for others. Then you organize. And then you can speak. Aizan doesn't speak. She organizes worlds. She organizes universe. A goo is going to speak. He has the right to speak. Because there is courage. And he knows he can speak the truth. And then we come to the partner to courage. The one that's going to bring equilibrium. So that courage will not go into any excess. Oh, shoo. Love comes to put it all together, to put everything in its place, allowing everything to grow and develop according to its own objective. Four, social principles. And we talked about dumb, which is not a social principle, just a biological, material, essential of life. So when we look at the doom, understanding these principles, we understand not as a religion where you come in to learn dogmas and repeat and be conditioned to react a certain way, but something that gives you a base for observing the universe through your own eyes, not somebody's program. You look at these principles and you have a duty to serve to apply these principles. It's not words. <coughs> there is no situation in Vadum where the hunga or the mambo must stand up and have a sermon and give a big speech. No, that's not what's required of them. What's required of them? I have a headache, I go to my hunga, I go to my mambo, and he's got to find a solution to my headache until I know enough to know to bring it myself. But if I'm new within the society, I am at the response, at the, the responsibility is the chief of the group. I'm hungry, my hunger, my mumbo must feed me. The priest has no responsibility for your hunger. That's your business. But he will not stop telling you Put the money in the whatever there. So he can buy wine and eat fine cheese. <laughs> and have rubies and all different kinds of fantastic amber jewels in every finger for different days. The Wunga has a responsibility because this is a belief system which demands service to one another. Why must we serve one another? Why? Excuse me? No, we're not put here to serve anybody else. We're put here to build good character. Why must we serve? Because it helps us to build good character. When you do something for someone else, it's not really for the person you're doing anything. You are the ultimate beneficiary. 
If I help you do something, I'm not doing for you. It's giving me an experience. It gives me a chance to grow. I'm building good character. That is the vision that Vodun brings to us. If I put in my head that when I help this brother, I'm helping him. Oh, he couldn't walk, so I thought held his arm. Yeah, I'm a wonderful person because I'm helping him and doing something for him. So now he owes me something. <laughs> oh yes. But when I know I'm holy, I'm helping the brother because it will make me stronger. It will build my good character. He owes me nothing. He gave me an opportunity to build my good character. So he owes me nothing. Finished doing, forgotten. Never met the brother. Do you see the difference? Oh, oh yes. Not going too fast? No. Take your time. True? Okay. Five principles. We're coming to number six. Number six is what we call a mutant principle. All the principles we have seen before, we will find them in Africa, and we will find them all over wherever Yoruba have, people have gone and carried the belief system of Ifa. It will have different names in different places, like we said before, Vodumenaiti, Lukumi in certain places in uh, South Africa, in the old South America, Obia in Jamaica, Santaria in Cuba. It is the same basic IFA belief system that has given all these different belief systems. They're not different, but they have different names. And sometimes the words change a little bit, but the principles remain the same. In IET, we'll see two other principles which you will not find in Africa. Because everything that is alive is constantly generating new situations. New situations, new concepts, new environment will bring new principles. I am certain there is a principle for representing the black men. There is a principle representing the white men. Before there can be a white man, there has to be a principle that says this thing can exist in matter. Okay? So, when white men meet black men, or white men take by force black women, and then we have what we call in IT, mulatto. So, there has to be, has to be a principle that existed in order for this matter to come to our eyes. And it has to be before we see it, it existed. Remember, everything exists first where we cannot see it. And then we will see it down the road. So we have this principle called Jal T Bois. J A L T I B W A. J A L T I B B W A. Jean T. Bois. And this principle, to the clearest way I can put it, is if you want an Ogu principle reduced to a very specific task. Jean T. Bois is during the revolution in 19, Jean T. Bois came to be as the perfect general. It is strictly a military spirit. It is there when you are in battles, there are weapons, there is a battle situation, then you're going to call on Jean T. Bois in order to deal with. But he's not going to worry about where the truth is, what the objective is. He is just there for the fighting part of the situation. You see? And we can find thousands of other principles. That's why some people say, well, you can never count how many gods there are in Voodoo. Well, there are no. Or there are many. Each one of us is one. 
But every situation creates a new principle. A war situation will produce very specific principles. Hmm? And the last one that I will mention to you is Gede. How many of you have already heard this word, Gede? G-U-E-D-E. -E. Also, you do not find Gede in Africa. That is something that is local. And to me, Gede is, again, a leg bar reduced to a specific situation. Gede is the principle of facing that which you don't see or don't want to see. Gede is generally represented as a very small person. It's not a child, but it has the size of a child. It's an adult with the size of a child. Gede is very contrary to established rules. Whatever when somebody is what we call possessed, by the day. If this is a person who is very sophisticated, who only speaks French, who does things with the little finger up and whatnot, when that person is possessed by the day, this person becomes absolutely right. No more. All that sophistication is gone. In other words, Gede brings out what the person has been hiding. Whereas, in opposite situation, you will find somebody who is not very educated, who does not have a very sophisticated mannerism, generally, and when possessed by Gede, this person is now like a queen, walking, very sophisticated mannerism. Huh? So all these are principles we must understand, not gods that we must serve. Principles that we must know, understand, and apply. It means nothing if you can make a speech about Ogun for 17 hours. But if whenever you hear boom, you jump under the table, you have not learned a thing about Ogun. You know nothing at all. If when a question is asked, you're always looking for what is it this person wants to hear in order to fix up your answer. You know nothing about it here. You cannot pretend to be a servant of a guru. Courage is absolutely indispensable for a good life. No courage no good life possible. Because no courage, there is no truth. And no courage, there is no justice. Must have courage, must have truth, justice, if there is to be good life. When we observe IET on a purely historical ground, period of revolutionary period, we observe each hero and heroine. We can identify each one of them functioning strictly on a particular principle. When one studies Toussaint Louverture, if you don't know anything about the doom, you cannot understand Toussaint. You can only repeat what they say about him. Let me just give you a little, let me try to give you a picture, a clearer picture. If I open any book about Ifa, when they describe Esu Elegba, they will tell me Esu Elegba is represented by a very short, skinny man, old, but very agile, very old, even crippled sometimes. But he has the agility of a young person. If you run after him, you cannot catch him. He's very fast. They will tell me that Esu Elegba is the divine interpreter. He speaks all the languages of everything that is alive. 
He speaks the language of the sun. He speaks the languages of humans. He speaks the languages of trees and the languages of animals. There is nothing that he cannot speak to. Esu Elikwa. They will tell me Esu is the messenger because since he speaks all the language, he brings messages back and forth. He does the interpretation. And Esu also will defend the truth. That's the lengva part of the soup. Okay. When I take any manual about Austria, about Toussaint Louverture, they will tell me he was a dark, <coughs> ugly old man. But he was called the king of the savannah because nobody could catch him once he was on a horse. I will learn that Toussaint spoke French, he spoke English, he spoke Spanish, he spoke Asian, he spoke Latin. He spoke the languages of all the forces at play on the scene. I will look at Toussaint's work. Toussaint was baptized by the slave masters, the slavers. He was baptized François Dominique Breda. François means a French thing or something that belongs to France. Dominique means born on a Sunday. Breda was the name of the plantation where he was born. We find that as a slave he carried the same. As he entered into the revolution, he got rid of the François and the Dominique, became Toussaint. They say they named him Toussaint because he was born on November 1st, All Saints Day. And as he really showed himself as a determined leader in the revolution, he got rid of the brother and people baptized him Louverture. Louverture means the one who opens the way. Toussaint Louverture. In everything that he did, a perfect leg bar. And I will go further. Remember I told you in the first example of this evening when I started to talk, leg bar usually does not go through the door. He opens the way. He shows the way. Everybody else goes. He stays behind. What do we see? To say opens the way for Haiti's independence. To say shows the way for Haiti's independence. And at Independence Day, to say is not there. His work was done. He could go anywhere. But in spite of everybody telling him, warning him, that is a trap. Don't go to this meeting. He said, no, I must go. My work is done here. Toussaint is gone. When we study Suzanne Simon Louverture, Toussaint's wife, everyone who went to his house, we have tons and of documents of all kinds of people, whether they were colonizers, whether they were black people, everyone talking about how Toussaint's house was so well organized that no matter what time of the day or night you came, you could eat, you could find everything you needed. Even when in hiding, this woman was always admired for her capacity to regulate things so they would last till they were no longer needed. But you didn't run out of things when Suzanne was on the scene. So we find Aizan. To say he's gone, Aizan goes with him. Dessaline comes on the scene. When we read Yoruba literature, we learn that Ogu's function we said his basic, his basic, his um, way of operating is to speak the truth for justice. 
but its purpose is to eliminate obstacles once an objective is set. Ogu's purpose eliminate obstacles once an objective is set. What do we see Desaline do on the scene? Number one, if you read anything about Desaline, people hate this man and they detest him. Why? Because he spoke the truth bluntly as Ogu must do. To say spoke the truth, but to say as a Legba, they tell you Legba is the diplomat. Legba will speak in symbolism. Legba will not say, I'm going out of this room. Legba will say, well, my time is almost over. Well, I think soon I should be outside. The da 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 he turns around. That's a Legba speaking. But then Ogu says, what the hell do we hear them? Oh, action and word and action. And the truth is always, no, these white folks, we gotta get rid of them. What is this? We don't gonna stay in slavery no more. To say that was that. To say that, well, the situation is difficult. <laughs> slavery is a very hard thing. We must try to do something to eliminate slavery. Not those slavers. That is like, but it is normal that he speaks that way. That's his role. And it is normal that Desmond speaks the way he spoke. Legba has to do his work if Ogu is to come on the scene and be able to do his work. It's not a question of Toussaint was no good, he's a so-and-so nigger or whatever, and Desmond was a... No, each had a role to play. Because life is a continuing flow, so is history. And unless each person takes care of what they're supposed to take care of and do what they're supposed to do, we handicap the one coming behind us. No matter how ready our children may be to eliminate certain situations that are here now, if we, the parents, don't do our share, they will be blocked. If we don't create opportunity for them to pass, how will they go? So Toussaint came and did his work as a good, perfect labor, operating with a dominant labor. Destiny shows up on the scene with a perfect ogu. All obstacles must be eliminated. The objective must be reached in a time established by me. That's ogu speaking. And they don't like the Ogu black man. <laughs> They're more comfortable with Legba black men. But don't worry, Legba black men have their work to do. We don't need them to change, we need them to be themselves. The worst thing we can have is a Legba trying to pretend to be an Ogu, or an Ogu trying to pretend to be a Legba. Be who you are and do your show. So, Gasoline comes in, people scream. Says, "Well, too many white folks here. Gotta get rid of that. We can't have independence that way." Oh my goodness, he's so brutal. But nobody's coming. We get in the entire revolution when you put all the Frenchmen, all the British, all the Spanish, all the Portuguese, all the uh, people from Holland, all the Dutch, who came to enslave us in IET, only 200,000 of them died. <coughs> only. Dessaline allowed over 80,000 French troops to leave IET and go to France. You tell me he is a brutal man? I say you are a fool. You don't understand nothing. Right. You don't know nothing about those science and you know nothing about mathematics. You don't even know arithmetic. Because if you had your arithmetic, your facts right, you would know that 450 million Africans were slaughtered during that period. And when you put 450 million against 200,000, you don't have no situation that is barely balanced. 
you out. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I don't even be tempted to say that Solin can do the job right. Because <laughs> had he done it, had he gone far enough with the job, we wouldn't be dealing with what we're dealing now. Speak on it. Ogu. Ogu is married to whom we said? Oshun. Oshun is what? Love. And love is balance, equilibrium, nurturing, providing. And let's look at Desmond's wife. Marie Claire Heureuse Félicité Bonheur Desmond. That's the name of one woman. <laughs> and the one woman whose father named while he had chains around his neck, irons around his wrist, and around his ankles. When he left the woman pregnant, since he was often put into chains because he wasn't a very docile slave, he said to his woman, if the child is born before I return, please don't name it until I see it. So when she was born, the mother called her girl. <coughs> and she was almost seven when her father was released from his iron bars and came to see his child for the first time. And when he saw her, he took her out, presented her to the universe, and said that in his chain he thought of her name. He knew it was a girl, he never had a name for a boy. And he named her Marie Claire Heureuse Félicité. <coughs> and when we look at the meaning of those names, Marie is French but comes from the Aramaic Miriam, which means the flesh which allows the infinity to experience time in the temple. That's why in most religion, they will name the mother of God Mary, as you say in English. Okay? Claire, which means that which the one who sends out light allows others to see. Glenn. Heureuse, which means happy. One who gives happiness, who invites happiness. Felicite, one who experiences continuous, uninterrupted contentment and satisfaction. That's what this man in chain named his child, who will become the first, first lady of the first freed land in 5,000 years of history. Mm. That's right. And you think things like this happen by chance? <laughs> no. And who is this woman with all this name? Okay, I told you her first names, right? Now, life will have it, circumstances will have it. She stays with one slave, slaver, 15, 16 years. He ran into financial problems. He sold her without ever making any papers for her. So he just sells her with her four first names. But she, he sells her to whom? To Mr. Bonheur, which means happiness. So she receives as a last name, Bonheur. <coughs> Fine. She's going to meet Monsieur Petit, which means small, with a white man who's going to be crazy about her and buy her five times the price she's worth. And when they bring her at night to this Monsieur Petit, because once 
white men buys you. Don't have too many things to say or do with you. You got only one. So they bring her that night to Monsieur Petit, and she says to this man, it's true, I am your fan. It's true, you bought me, and you have the power and the strength to do anything you want with me. But if you would like to know the woman who lives here, then you will marry me. The man, they say, was stunned. Because slaves never raise their eyes to look at the slaver. And here is the slave woman I just bought, very expensive, I might add. And she's going to talk about marrying. And besides, it's against the law. But somehow, they say with her quiet, soft-spoken voice, the man didn't feel the courage to go any further. She said, take her back. They took her back while he thought how to deal with this. She was brought back several times, <coughs> and each time with the same peaceful strength, she would pose her conditions. And in the end, the man paid the judge and married her. <laughs> he barely lived eight months. He died eight months later. She owned everything he had. She'd already purchased her mother and father from slavery and had a fantastic library. He was a painter, all the paintings and whatnot. That's the life of this woman whose name, you see, the father name, Marie Claire Heureuse Felicité. Powerful names put together. Sounds are not just sounds. Be careful what you name your children. This woman is going to later on, so after the death of this white man, she decides what she wants to do with her life. She has means now. She, wants, she doesn't like war. She doesn't like fighting. A lot of women went into the revolution. She wouldn't be any part of it. Have nothing to do with weapons. She says what she will do, her mission is, and she, she will go on the battlefields after the battle. Because the custom at the time was, if you cannot get up and walk away from the battlefield, you are considered dead. It may be that just somebody fell on you, or a horse fell on you, and you can't get up. But nobody's going to look at you. Once the battle is over, everybody that can't walk walks out, and the rest stays there. So she decides that's her job. She will go on the battlefield, separate the living from the dead. Go under, she's a very thin woman. Go under this huge big man. <coughs> pick them up, put them on her uh, wagon. She had a special slanted wagon that she had made. And brought these people, pile them up on her wagon, take them home, and take care of them. She had fantastic talent in taking and giving help with leaves and trees and flowers and natural. And that's how this woman lived for a number of years. Until 1801 when she met on the battlefield Jean-Jacques Dessalines. He came back to analyze why the battle went the way it went down. And he saw this woman dragging men onto a wagon. He went to help her. They started to talk. He fell in love proposed to marry. She says, no, I don't want to marry. Because I've given myself a mission. I want to help the man left on the battlefield for death. He says, well, I'm Jean-Jacques Dessalines, big time general. If you marry me, you'll be in a better position to do this. She says, no. Usually when women are married, they are very they're unable to do certain things. He says, no, I give you my word. You can do anything you want when you're married to me. He convinced her. She says, but we're going to sign a contract. Marrying you leaves me free to think, speak, and act according That's to my right. convictions. Yes. Marrying you will not, your enemies will not automatically become my enemies. That's all right. That's all, is it? She had four friends, but the last one, blew, he blew away. No, how can I? I'm running for, this is a revolution for independence. <laughs> How could my, my enemies be your friends? Well, then we cannot get married. <coughs> and 
Jasmine said, okay. She wrote the text. She signed. She said, sign here. Jasmine said, you know, don't know how to write. She said, okay, I'll teach you. Make your cross. But when he got married, he signed his name. This is love. And he respected this woman. And this woman respected her man. He was strength. And she was the balance formula that kept strength from going overboard. That brought justice in the life of Desolene. There are several examples to this. But when we look at Marie Claire Rose, Felicity Bonheur, Desolene, we see pure Oshu in our those principles are not there as something out there spooky for us to admire. They are for us to know ourselves. When you learn the principles, then you look at yourself and try to see who you are naturally. <coughs> All of them are in us, but there is a dominant principle. Once you identify your dominance, the dominant principle in you, you have identified your strength. And those that are not dominant in you are your weaknesses. So now you're going to build them up. Don't say I'm a no goo. It's okay that I just push, push, push all the time. No. Yes. In some situation, that's it. But you have to also learn to be a lecturer. You have to also learn to be an Oshu. Don't say I'm a man, I can be no Oshu. You need to be an Oshu. You need to be an Aizan. We need to develop every principle in ourselves. That's what will make us strong. Am I going to see when I see a three-year-old child crying who needs a little affection and care, I'm going to say I'm an Oshu, I'm an Ogu. So I'm going, what's the matter with you, child? No. I need to be your shoe, no matter what. So each situation, I'm going to learn that's what's going to make my strength. In this situation, I know that I need to be your shoe. Here, I need to be a goo. Here, I need to be like Bob. That's what I need. That's what will make me strong. And at every moment, I'm operating on strength, not pretending. Operating on what is best for that situation for this particular time. Remember, to be right is to be the right person, in the right place, at the right time, operating on the right principle. <coughs> If you have all the, the first three and the last one is wrong, you mess it all up. In order to do this, we must look into ourselves. You can't be functioning with yourself day in and day out and you don't know who you are. You don't know what is your dominant trait. When I'm going in a debate, for example, with someone, <coughs> From the little bit that you've heard, who am I? <laughs> what is dominant? Take a guess. What do you see? Huh? What do you say? Somebody said something. Huh? Oh, goo. What do you say? What do you say? I'm an oh, goo dominant. That's true. Knowing that, when I'm going to have a debate or I'm having a discussion with someone, I know that I will have a tentative to want to do everything quickly and powerfully. No. This is not a battlefield right here. This is you and your man. Take time. Give him a break. And you know he can't go as fast as you do. He ain't no good. A good is quick. I gotta give the other person a chance to, then we can have a discussion. Otherwise, when I was very young, I would just frighten people. I come in so strong, 
People are just afraid and there's no discussion. That's it. And it's, this woman is a tyrant. <laughs> it's true. We got to look at things for what they are. We can't be afraid of ourselves. And we have to understand the other ones looking at you. Of course, a uh, Oshun character looking at an Ogu personality would say, boy, I can't deal with this one. This one is just too. See? We have to. And that's your strength when you know. So and when I know I'm going to deal with this type of character, then I have to take a little bit of develop, shine up my Oshun personality and then come in. See, at some point, Ogu may have to take over. That all, all depends how things are. But I'm going to give Oshu, I'm going to give Legba, I'm going to give Aizan all the opportunities to talk to you first. And I'm going to hold back on Ogu, because I know he's always there. The others, I have to work at it to bring them out. It's not natural. So, but if I did not know, I would constantly be in shock with everybody. It's very important to know who you are. Know your strength. Know your weaknesses. Don't be afraid. As an Ogu, I naturally speak loud. Ogu brings the thunder. Yes. But in the recent years, with maturity, I've learned to also learn to speak soft. That's when I bring my little Oshun out. And everybody's okay with, you know, they feel more comfortable with this one. But be careful, if you mess up, you're gonna come out. That's right. And I'm not responsible for what he does. No belief system is worth anything if it does not bring you to improve your life. The reason we're here is to make each day better than the one before. If we're not on that path, then we don't need to be here. <coughs> what we believe in is no good. Something's wrong with our belief system. We need to question it. Throw it out. Get something else. That's right. <laughs> if you're into something and it's not taking you anywhere, why in the world are you going to stay in it? <laughs> You didn't come to the start to suffer. Believe me, the stuff they told us in the church that we came here because you know we have to suffer and pay our sins. No, I don't know for somebody else, but you and I, brothers and sisters, we don't have no sin, no original sin to pay. Guarantee. We have no original sin to pay. And what is worse? Look at those criminals who ate 450 million Africans, reduced the continent population by half. Then they came to this man here, totally eliminating the entire population of two continents and a thousand islands. And they're not satisfied? Yeah. Yeah, they're not atoning anything. I don't see them suffering and going through all the stuff we're going through. So why should I pay for some original sin when the, the everyday sinner is paying for nothing? <laughs> no. You have no original sin or your slate is clean. The divine lives in you. You don't need to go anywhere to meet with God. Just look in the mirror. Yes. Trust in yourself. Learn to know yourself. Take time to know.
know yourself, to meet yourself, to dialogue with you. Yes, some people, if they see you, will say, that moment is crazy. That's okay. Keep on talking. I talk to my now all the time. Pull her coat when she's acting stupid. <laughs> Clap for her when she does something nice. Yeah. But I always know as a human, she's going to act stupid sometimes, no matter what, no matter how long she lives. But I don't get upset. I just, you know, tell her, hey, listen, girl, this, this number here, you don't need to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and I keep on going. I'm not going to go through any traumatizing, going through all kind of, oh my goodness, I did, oh, no. There's one word, only one, something I, the Bible says that I'm interested in repeating. It says, know the truth, and the truth shall break you free. And that's the truth. You did something stupid? Don't beat up on yourself. Just speak it up. Hey, listen, girl, this year, that's no good. You know you shouldn't have done that. You talk to yourself, you face up to the fact that you did something stupid, and that's the end of that. You go on about your business. No tears necessary. No, you don't need all this. No. Take hold of your life. When you see somebody, identify who they are. If it's an ugu, don't put yourself in their way. Because he will identify you as an obstacle and you will be eliminated. Generally, you stand on the side when talking to a group. You don't stand in his way. As a matter of fact, intelligent people don't stand in the way of any force. You take a position to leave their path clear. Thank you. Thank you. So, identify the principles in all things. When you read a book, you don't need to memorize all 378 pages. You want to get the essence. What is it this person wants to say? You want to grab hold of the essence of that book, or the speech, or the talk, or whatever. And then you want to take that in the essence. What is it in there that can serve me to build the character? I'm going to go with that. All the rest does not matter. Not to me. Because when somebody writes a book 378 pages, <laughs> millions of people are going to read it. There is something in there for each of them. All of it is not for you. The essence is for us all. But the details, there's only one detail for Maybe one detail in there for me. I want to find that one. Well, hold of it, improve my character, and go on about my business. I don't need to know everything they said about heart. You imagine in IT, so-called historians, writing about Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Toussaint Louverture, and not knowing anything about Vodou. So of course, they're constantly in the battle. You know, this historian is pro Louverture. This historian is pro Dessalines. So the one who's pro Dessalines tell you Louverture was a field nigger or house nigger, I don't know what. The other one tells you it's something else. Neither one understanding anything. It's not our role to reinvent the past. It's not our role to judge those who have gone before us. Our role is to identify their strength and use it to improve our present. We don't care if Martin Luther King had a girlfriend. That's his business. Right, right, that's right. That's not what we want from him. He's right. gone. Right. We respect his memory and we want to grab what he had of positive. Yeah. And we want to hold on to that right. to 
improve today. Elijah Muhammad, he brought many things for us. We don't need to sit down and have debate and den denigrating him. No. We want to, the man knew how to own. Who was he? Elijah. Huh. I up. Yes. He knew how to organize. That's what we want from him. Yes. The rest, we don't care. Malcolm X. <laughs> you too freak, brother. You must be all good yourself. <laughs> yes. Now he was on boot. So we want to catch, catch that strength, that truth, that justice that he had in him. The rest, we don't care. Don't let people, what basically the colonizers, what they do. With our leaders. When they first come on the scene, of course there will always be those who attack them, but the wiser ones don't attack them. In fact, they put them up on a pedestal. They tell us this man is God. This man is divine. This man is you know, they up and up, and they put him up so high. And the rest of us say, yeah, that's right. He's God. He's divine. He's everything white men say. That's true. 